series from Houston, Texas. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Jeremy Thike. So today we've got a great show in store. We're going to talk about all the things that are new with the app model and really explain what the genesis of all those things were. We've done a lot on the Garage series with Richard Dezerga especially and even Jason Henderson on the engineering side about apps. But today we've got a special show in store, right? Yeah, so today we're going to really kind of focus on what's, what's, what's the same in, in the new app model what's different and then what's actually better compared to the old traditional model. All right, so we're going to explain all of this and more, but before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false? With the app model, you can build solutions that impact Office Client, Office Online, and modern Office on Windows 8, iPad, and Android. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Jeremy, let's talk about what's the same, what's different, and what's better about the new app model for Office. So I think from, a, from the aspects of where we are in uh, the current process with the app model, um, you know, you, you still leverage the same building blocks. So when I'm looking in SharePoint, I still have these concepts of lists, libraries, event receivers and workflows and web parts. But you, know, there's, you can still leverage a lot of that new stuff by new APIs. And the same in Office. If I'm in Office here, you know, we still have this concept of being able to build inside the ribbon and the compose views within new mail and new event and in the task pane within Outlook and, and Word and, and, and obviously the read views within those products as well. And then likely inside in Exchange here, you, know, you still have this concept of being able to manipulate the mail objects and the event objects and the task objects that you've always used as an Exchange developer uh, in, in the past. It's just that now we have this much better, broader model that we can work with. Right, so a lot of the building blocks then are the same. So what else is the same? And then also, as well as the building blocks, we, we still have the same app model. Uh, and API. So essentially, in SharePoint 2010, you had the REST model, you had the client side object model that you could use if you were building with full trust solutions or whether you were building with sandbox solutions. You can still use those APIs inside the new app model. So even now, if you're a SharePoint 2010 or a 2013 developer and you're not using the new app model, you can get used to what's going to be available to you in the app model by starting to leverage these new APIs. The same applies inside uh, of, of Office. We still have great surface API layers within all of those major projects that you guys live in day in, day out, and your business users live in as well, wherever it be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, or, or Outlook. Those surface layers are still available within this application model. So speaking of mail, let's have a look at the other mail right. object model. So then we have the exchange side of the house as well, where you know, we can go in and start injecting different areas, creating new mail, creating new uh, tasks and calendar events directly within our business application. So what, what I'm trying to highlight here is, is that although you've, you may have in the past been a SharePoint developer or you may have been an Office developer, and now we can actually think about yourself as an Office platform developer. And you can start thinking about your business solutions being built, not just for one particular product within that stack, but building a business solution that sticks together all those different products and, and provides a much richer interface for your, your end users. Right, so when we go beyond object model. That's right, and then so the last part is, is just to really highlight that from a compatibility perspective, if you're currently building in full trust code or sandbox code on premises with SharePoint, you can still do those things. We are supporting those frameworks moving forward. But naturally, we're encouraging you guys to move over to the app model because that's really where the product group are, are containing their focus in the future for building on top of that Office development platform. And you'll see as we look at Office and mail apps, the app layer is going to be consistent throughout all three of these stripes. That's right. And you'll see here that you know, if you're an Office developer right now and you're using VSTO or VBA, those APIs are still there. But the benefit is, is if you move to the app model, maybe you've learned the app model for the SharePoint Online approach, you can actually use exactly the same lessons you've learned to build for SharePoint in the app model as you did for Office. And likewise, additionally, if I'm on the server in Exchange as a product set, you can also leverage that same learning again. Whereas before, typically you're in one of these three buckets, and now you have the ability to learn once, but be able to deploy to all of our Office development platform. All right, so let's talk about what's a bit different in this release, because I know that we've changed, like you've, you've alluded to it earlier in terms of client-side object model versus REST. Let's go into what's different with the new model. Right. So from a different perspective, uh, for, for the SharePoint guys out, 
out there. We, essentially, we've moved away from being a very tightly coupled experience. So if you've been in SharePoint development for a few years, maybe in your 2003 or 2007 or your 2010 days, you're building a lot of your custom components directly into the SharePoint interface. If you had managed code that was running workflows or event receivers, essentially what you were doing there was compiling that code and deploying it to the server, and that was running directly inside of your SharePoint farm. Now the problem there was if you wrote very poor performing code or maybe you had some exceptions that you weren't really expecting, you could actually have brought down that SharePoint environment. As we moved through into the 2010 days, we introduced another type of approach, which was the sandbox solution. Now this was a pretty good, pretty good approach to trying to move your custom code that was running on the SharePoint box into an isolated process on that box. So your SharePoint standard code would be running in its own process. Your code would run over here. And if you did start to throw a lot of exceptions or maybe you were doing too much CPU effort, SharePoint would actually degrade and even stop those services for you. We found that that wasn't always the best, most efficient approach. So what we did in SharePoint 2013 was actually introduce the fact that we've decoupled it completely. So now when you build your applications, you're actually running your code completely off of the SharePoint box. And this really allows you to not affect any of the issues that you had in the past when maybe you're upgrading from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013 and not really knowing what you're going to affect by having those customizations built and baked into your SharePoint farm. Now we can happily upgrade the SharePoint environment in a way without having to worry so much about the app model that's decoupled. And obviously for us this is great because it means that we can continually keep improving our Office 365 environment as well and knowing that you guys are comfortable with having your app model decoupled and not having the issues that you would have done if they would have been directly in, in, in the weeds of the SharePoint environment. Right, and in terms of the authentication engine that we've provided, it really gives you a secure way of authenticating between the services, whether you're in SharePoint or in clients, whether you're in mail, you can actually use things like standards-based uh, OAuth, for example, to be able to talk to those various services using the external web services as part of the app model. Totally. There's no more need to kind of capture usernames and passwords and store them in property bags or in your web config or your SharePoint lists. I know everybody does it, but now we don't have to worry about that because the OAuth tokens handle all this when you, when you deploy your apps into that environment. And I think there's another big benefit here in that we've got a lot broader reach, right? There is, and um, it's really exciting for me being in this role to kind of evangelize this aspect of it. Again, coming back to that, you know, if you're a SharePoint developer or an Office developer of large, you are stuck inside either ASP, ASPX pages or VSTR or VBA language. Now with the new app model, essentially I can go and build in HTML JavaScript directly, or I could be building in PHP or Ruby. And you'll actually see, if you go into the Office Store, that there's a, a few very good uh, apps in, the, in that store that are actually built directly on top of the RAM, uh, LAMP stack. So it's really exciting to see what ISVs that have maybe have not played in this space in the Office developer platform uh, before are now building on their language they're comfortable in building as a web developer, but now being able to deploy these things into that whole reach of the Office platform. But I know besides all of this, there's a lot more stuff that gets better. So let's have a look at a few demonstrations to really prove how much better it is coming into the new world of apps for Office. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, so what do you got for us, Jeremy? So I've got a Visual Studio project right now. We actually have Visual Studio 2013 Update 2 available. The great thing about Update 2 is the tools, the Office tools are actually included directly in that download now. So if you were downloading the Office tools separately now, you don't need to. They're actually part of that Update 2. And there's been some great improvements in that tooling, such as the Cordova support that was announced in the keynote. So now we can start building mobile applications that target not just Windows Phone, but Android and iOS as well. Um, and leverage these Office 365 directly from in that project type. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guys actually go out there and build those mobile applications. Um, today what I wanted to do is quickly show you an example of an Outlook app um, which I'll deploy into Outlook Online. So all I'm going to do is just jump in here and just go to File New Projects as you would do as any uh, developer. Um, we're going to go on this Office Wax SharePoint section here in the templates and we're just going to pick App for Office. I'm going to give it a quick name and I'm just going to click OK in here. And that's going to go away and create my project. But to do that, it needs to know what type of surface area I want to target with this app. So in this example, I actually want to target the mail concept with my app. I'm going to click Next here. And what I want to do is when I'm composing either a meeting invite or I'm composing a mail item, I want to be able to use this app. So I've unchecked the read form. And this will make more sense when you see the demo. So that's going to go away now. It's going to create all the files within my Visual Studio project. And essentially, it's going to give me a, a surface layer to start with to actually get going here. There so 
Yep. So then in my view down the bottom here, I'll essentially get a home.html file. So again, I'm writing in HTML. I'm not forced to write in VBA or VSTO to build within Outlook anymore. So if you've got your web development skills, you can do this quite easily. And you'll see there's some default, default, files, uh, default text in here. I'm going to add a reference to a few things. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a reference to um, my jQuery UI, because I'm going to use a bit of jQuery UI to present that in the, in the page. And then on, on, on the bottom here, I'm actually going to remove all of this default text that I get inside my content main. And I'm just going to put in some, inject some uh, very si much more simpler text here in my div. And essentially, that's what's going to render inside my pane where I debug that inside, inside my Outlook. And then my home.js, this is the default code you get. So you can see here there's some demo code where you can see that it's using the Office JavaScript client library to go through and get certain things, such as the subject line that's been typed into the Outlook mail client. Um, as well as maybe adding some recipients directly into it. So maybe you want to add to the two line directly from the app. You could do that very easily with a little bit of JavaScript code. But all I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to come up the top here as part of the initialization of my app. And I'm going to call a nice function called um, uh, load buildings. And down the bottom here, I'm just going to add that load buildings function. In the load buildings function, what I'm actually doing here is I'm creating a, a buildings array. And then I've got a service URL, which is actually running in the cloud. And that's going to return me a, a JSON format REST API of a list of buildings from Microsoft. This is a common scenario I've had since I've joined Microsoft, where I need to know where all the buildings are on campus. Uh, being in Buildings 1 and someone goes, meet me in Building 17, often I don't know where I'm going. So this code, very, very simple. I'm going to go and call that service URL with a simple jQuery get JSON call. And then essentially, I'm going to load that jQuery accordion, which is part of the jQuery UI and loop through that collection I got back from REST and render that on the screen. And then all I need on top of that is once I've got that list in my task pane, is I'm essentially going to need a way of actually pushing and injecting whatever building I select and injecting some code directly into my content of my email. So you'll see here that I have the ability to grab the item body of the mail I've created. And if I scroll over, I've built out some HTML where if I, I'm building out URLs to the details of the building, I'm also doing things such as um, on the click event, being able to jump over to Bing and get directions based on where I am in that context. Now, the nice bit about this is you've seen from scratch. I'm just using a standard Visual Studio environment. I've added a few lines of code to a brand new project. And essentially, what I'm going to do now is F5 into my environment. It's going to ask me, because I'm using Outlook Online, it's going to ask me for a login that I can use. So this is really great, because basically, you can, as a developer, just talk to your mailbox that's running Exchange Online and immediately upload this app to start testing it. And it's actually running against your production exchange service, but you're the only one that sees it. Right. And, and so it really allows you to not have to have development environments set up where you've got to go and build exchange environments and build SharePoint environments. I can F5 in and get that experience, whether it's Exchange Online or SharePoint Online or any other parts of the Office development stack that I've got. So you, know, you can go and simply sign up for an Office development um, preview uh, environment for 100 bucks a year as a developer. And that allows you to get started very quickly. So I'm just going to sign into my one here. So you'll see it's jumped me straight into my Outlook Online environment. Um, and now um, I can go and click on New Mail. And what you'll see, the new experience on the right-hand side, is that it allows me to see this apps. And I have the ability to click on that app. So obviously, from a corporate perspective, I could add a, a, a lots of different apps in there, depending on whether it's expenses or PTO submissions. I could do all this stuff directly from an Outlook Online or Outlook the product. Now you can see there, I can just click on the MS Buildings. And that's going to go away now. And in this pane, load all those buildings from that REST service that I've called. And then if I click on this building here, you can see you know, I've got that nice accordion fill for the jQuery UI. Um, I'm in building one, so I'm going to set up a meeting here with um, with Jeremy, and I'm just going to click Insert. And on that button Insert, I've now been able to interact with the out-of-the-box body of that mail and inject that HTML content so that Jeremy knows where to find Building 1. Hopefully, he does know where to find Building 1, because he lives in Building 1. I actually work out of Building right. 1 it's <laughs> myself. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. So this also doesn't just uh, apply to mail. All of what you're showing here is something I can do for SharePoint, for the rich clients if I want to consume yep. task pane or content apps in Excel, for example. That's right. It's great because we've got one model that's used pervasively throughout all the different uh, application types. And, and the nice bit is, if I stop the debugging here, you saw that when I F5'd in, that jumped straight into Outlook Online. Very, very easily, if I select that project and go into Properties, you can see here that I can actually target 
to run and debug that in the Office desktop client or even in Google Chrome as well. So you get a lot of flexibility to test how your app will look and feel. Um, you can also push it, if, once you've F5'd into Outlook Online, I could go over to my iPad or my Android device and go into OA there and actually see the app running there as well. So again, we're targeting all these platforms and target surface areas that your users have available to them from one project with one app model across not just SharePoint, but also Office and all the products that come with it. So it really is exciting for us as Office developers now to be able to build in whatever language we choose to build in rather than being forced into this ASP.NET world or VSTO or VBO world. Great, great demonstration in terms of how to get these apps actually built and running in mail. That's about all the time we have for this show. Before we wrap up though, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false? With the app model, you can build solutions that impact Office Client, Office Online, and modern Office on Windows 8, iPad, and Android. We can build solutions, of course, with the app model. It is true. We saw it all on stage. It's all the, what's better in terms of the brand new app model. And we highly recommend you go check out dev.office.com. This is really that landing page that our team in, internally at Redmond's targeting for you guys to learn about everything that you can do on top of the platform. And it's exciting because the platform itself is developing, changing pretty much on a monthly or a, I would say at least a quarterly basis to add net new functionality. We saw that with the Compose apps as yep. part of kind of the SP1 time frame. And you'll see a lot of those announcements on blogs.office.com WACDEV. We'll be producing all the new tooling on there and any new uh, surface areas. We'll always be announcing those things. So definitely keep an eye on that blog. And of course, you can follow us on the garage at microsoft.com slash garage or on Twitter at Office Garage. Right. So that's about all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Thanks, guys.